Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna 550 XP. Customer complaint is that he broke the back handle on the saw. You can see that there's a big chunk of it missing. I joked that he may have used it as a wheel chalk, but I think he actually drove over it with a tractor. Now, a lot of times when you drive over your chainsaw with a tractor, it doesn't end so well. Uh, imagine that, right? But in this case, I can't find anything else wrong with this thing besides the fuel tank. And uh, that's pretty, pretty lucky, actually. So we're going to get started here by removing the handle. There's going to be five screws, two on the bottom, two on the side, and one that goes into the cylinder. Now once all the screws are out, the handle's just going to come right off. I mean, it's loose, but it's actually easier if you remove the top cover first and give yourself a little bit of clearance, or if the chain brake handle wasn't on there, maybe it'd come off easier that way. The silly thing about this video is you'll see that the next step that I do is removing the top cover. So think about that if you're doing this job on your own. I mean, you look at the damage on the handle, but you look at the top cover and there's nothing wrong with it. So uh, he got he got pretty lucky. So the first thing I want to do is remove the throttle linkage. It's a piece of cable, and there's just a ferrule on the end of the cable that goes into the linkage on the carburetor. And then we'll grab a pliers and remove the cable itself from the holder. The plastic sheath of the cable just pushes into uh, a tube and that's the holder for the cable. So we're going to pull that down and out of the holder. So here's our new fuel tank, all shiny and pretty. And I'm just kind of taking a look at it to see which pieces I need and it didn't come with that side grip. So we're going to have to harvest one of them from somewhere. A quick look inside the tank reveals that the fuel line has to come out from the outside of the tank. So we'll get the filter off of it and push the line back in. Then roll the saw over and pop all the fuel lines off. This first one, main line that had the filter on it, it's pressed into the tank. You can see there's a big shoulder right there so it's got to come in from the outside. The middle line is our tank vent and the final line there is our fuel return line. So the tank's disconnected now, it's just a matter of weaseling it off of there. We're going to pull the brake cover. And you can see on the bottom there's a, a big bushing that was kind of holding it in place. Carefully pull the throttle cable out. And I say careful not because you want to save the cable, but it's going through a rubber grommet and if you just yank on it. Uh, you might dislodge the grommet. So this part is really pretty easy. You put the shiny new tank on one side and the old tank on the other. And if the shiny one is missing a part that the old one has, switch it over. This anti-vibe spring doesn't matter where you lock it down in place. It's kind of universal. But this one, the rear, rear one, it's got a tab on it and that tab has to line up with some holes in the crankcase and we'll look at that later. Now we are threading, making new threads, okay? These tanks aren't pre-threaded so when you think that you've got the thing tightened all the way down, 
make sure that it actually is and there's no play in that spring between the spring and the body of the tank. Okay, here's uh, the spot where that anti-vibe mount attaches, and you see that series of notches in there. That spring's got to be able to land in one of those notches. So if it was, if the notch was facing, or the tab was facing down, it wouldn't line up in one of those notches. We just gotta orient this properly so that it lands close. Okay, just a final check to see if I swapped everything. And there's one more piece, this rubber bushing. It's just a press fit, but it's pressed on there pretty good. Okay, what are we going to do about that grip? Well, luckily, I have a plethora of used parts laying around. And there's no shortage of uh, 550 XP parts. Not because they're a bad saw, actually quite the opposite. They're a popular saw, so everybody gets their hands on one and not everybody knows how to maintain a chainsaw, so I got a lot of extra parts. First step, push the throttle cable through the rubber grommet at the bottom of the saw. If you don't do this now, you're never going to do it. Then I'm going to try and get the main fuel line pushed into the hole, or at least started before I put the tank into place. And actually, I kind of fail on this. Popped out right there again. Now I'm just, just pushing the slack into the hole there. Alright, looks like the tank is fitted. And we'll push the tank vent line in place and then we'll use a little bit of fluid film on this rubber hose so we can push the fuel return line into place. I sprayed fluid film on a lot of different things and never had a problem with it degrading rubber or plastic or anything like that so I feel pretty good about using it on fuel lines. Now we get to play the game. Where did I put the chain catcher? Got to be around here somewhere. I know where the bolt is. Don't know where the chain catcher is. Now, if you can't find the chain catcher, I mean it's a safety piece, right? So don't send the saw without one. You got to get that on there. I found mine. It was laying on the floor right where I left it. Right? Okay, that looks good. Let's get the anti-vibe in the back here bolted down. Well, by golly, it might be this one. So now we'll grab the fuel line and give it a tug and, and seat it into place. It was just pushed in through the tank hole, but uh, I hadn't actually snapped the uh, preformed part of it into place. And you'll see we put a blue fuel filter on here. The blue colored ones are the latest recommendation from Husqvarna. Apparently they, they must be a finer micron and they help uh, filter out some of the fines that have been giving some auto-tune saws a problem. 
At least that's what the service bulletin says. So now we're going to put our handle back on. And this can be a little clumsy, and it can be a real pain in the butt if the handle's bent at all. So we're going to kind of get things lined up here, and, and it'll kind of snap into place. That black strap is a limiting strap. Make sure that you have that lined up behind the hole of the handle. You don't want to leave that hanging out. If that weren't attached and somebody was cranking on the saw into a log, it might open up the gap between the tank and the crankcase far enough to pull the fuel lines out of the tank or something like that. Then be really careful with the screw that goes into the cylinder. If you cross thread that one, you're not going to be happy. So of the four screws that are threading into the plastic, there may be two long ones and two short ones. If you have two short screws, they always go down here in the bottom. A long screw could protrude through the tank and hit the bottom of the crankcase and wear a hole in it. I have seen that before, especially if it's plastic. Alright, we're just going to get our clutch cover back in place. Everything feels really nice. Throttle doesn't work though. We got to get the plastic sheath of the throttle cable back into the holder. And once that's in there, Open up the throttle with your finger, you know, roll it open so that you can get the ferrule of the cable started in the little catch on the throttle. And once you got it in there, just pull the trigger and it'll snap into place. Top cover goes back on. And we'll put some fuel in it. Then we're going to take a few pulls on it and see if it'll run. So that's all I got for you on the fuel tank swap on Husqvarna 550 chainsaw. Thanks for watching. Later.